everyone, today's story is Sweet Tooth. This is Dirt, your typical average everyday kid, except for one thing. Ew, ooh, er, er. Ah, yes, there it is all right, the molar in the back. You're probably saying, a tooth? What's the big deal about a tooth? And all, ordinarily, you'd be correct, but that is no ordinary tooth. Uh-uh. This is Stuart's sweet tooth. One nagging, annoying, demanding, blah, 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 enough with the yanking. I need a candy bar now. Ow! The very loud sweet tooth. Does it have that gooey stuff in the middle? Cause it's got to have that gooey stuff in the middle. There, said the door through smeared kisser and had a glove. Satisfied? Ah, sweet. Yes, a tooth that wants that it wants. When it wants it, and let everybody know it. Take for example, two years ago at Cousin Charlotte's wedding, Stuart was on his vest, baby behavior. His shoes were shined, bowy straight, hands were spotless. Grandfather had just left his glass to toast the bride and groom when I'm falling asleep here. Come on, moving along, Gramps. Cut the cake. Time to cut the cake. I want to eat hunk with all the icing. I don't know him, uttered Mother through a gritty smile. He doesn't belong to me, said Dad under his breath. Who is that boy? muttered Grandmother. Stuart wiped his pink rose wiped the pink rose from his lips. It's the sweet tooth. It was not a pretty picture. The tooth was no better behaved in school. Stuart has enough detention slips to wallpaper his room. Why, just two weeks ago, who can tell me the capital of North Dakota? asked Mrs. Fennigan in geography class. Jolly beans, said a muffled voice from the back of the room. Did you say something, Stuart? asked Mrs. M- Mrs. Finnegan. Licorice. Stuart, I'm afraid I can't hear you answer, said Miss Mrs. Finnegan. Lollipops. You're going to have to speak up, Stuart. Hey, I'm dying here for a couple of chocolate peanut butter cups, okay? Detention slip number four, 432. But I'm telling you, you, it's not me, says Stuart, and he was led away to the principal's office. It was the tooth. The movies, you don't really want to go there, do you? Not with the steward, anyway. Who there somebody pass the yummy gummies already? Shh! Don't look at me, too, steward. It's the it's the tooth. And of course, there was an unforgettable Easter basket mischief. Now that was really ugly. The Sunday a.m., the family awoke to find jelly beans littering the living room. Marshmallow chicks were missing. The trail of com- com- crumpled yellow fo- foil wrappers led to one person and one person only. Ooh, Stuart! cried the disappointed mother and dad. I can't look! whimpered his sister Allison, cl- closing her eyes. Those chocolate bunnies never had a chance, moaned. Stuart rubbing his belly aching stomach. It was the tooth. Hey, 
Hey, can we stop going down memory lane here and open up that bag of cookies? That's it. I had it enough, cries Stuart. Enough? I hadn't even had one. No more cookies, shouted Stuart. No more candy, no more cake, no more anything. That's no more anything, said the tooth. And who do you think you're kidding, kid? Bring on the chocolate chips, Stuart sighed. What choice did he have? He was a boy with one big sweet tooth. He tore open the bag. He grabbed one and two, then two, three, four cookies. He opened his mouth. Come to Papa, shouted the tooth. Stuart stopped. What are you waiting for, kid? Come on. Cookie, 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 cookie. Stuart dropped the cookies, but not in his mouth. It's over, tooth. Said that suddenly determined Stuart, I'm cutting you off. Stirring right now. It's cold turkey. Cold turkey, eat! I have, hate cold turkey, turkey unless you add a little cranberry sauce. Didn't you hear me, Tooth? cried Stuart. I said it's over. From now on, there is no nothing for you but a. a Healthy diet, Stuart gulped. Healthy kids, say you don't mean it, well the tooth. But Stuart meant it, all right. He meant every word. Yes, it, it was trying. Yes, it was difficult, okay. It was darn near impossible. But Stuart stayed Strong. For the tooth, it was a different story. Peace? You're giving me peace? Little dry green veggie marbles? Broccoli? You're feeding me a shrub? That's not going to do it. That's your dessert. Where's dessert? I'm begging you. When do we get to the good stuff? I can't hear you, says Jared, putting down his fork and placing his hand over his ears. Strong, he stays strong. Just one minty binty chocolate covered peanuts before eating the snack. How about it? A nudge, a nibble, a breath mint, something. Forget it, says Jared, turning off the night light. Strong, strong. Come on, what do I say? One spoon for sugar or the tooth. As Stuart ate his cereal, Stuart shook his hand. The tooth was losing its grip, and it knew it. A drop of cold chocolate milk, one measly little crump on crump. No way, said Stuart, very strong. Hey, watch this toothbrush, shouted the tooth, and... And keep the tongue of yours on the other side of your mouth, trying to wiggle me out of here, huh? Well, I'm not going, kid. I'm not going anywhere. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Stuart burst, flushed, goggled. Ah! ah moaned the tooth weakly. He's not hearing me. I'll get you for this, kid. Stuart smiled. He was winning. Oh, yes, he was winning. Three days passed. The tooth was quiet, very quiet, almost too quiet. But Stuart wasn't thinking tooth. He was thinking baseball. It was biggest the game of the season. Bottom of the ninth, Stuart was at the plan- plate. Warner's Runners were on the second and third, two out to strike. Strike. The crowd was on their feet. The game was on the line. Stuart's time. Stuart's team was down by one run. The pitcher went to went into wind wind up. There was hush from the stands. The off. Big fat fastball was heading for the plate. 
it was all of the stores, but then, boy, could I go for a hunk of bubble gum right now? Swing, swish, he he he, strike three, yelled the umpire. Year out. Gotcha, said the tooth. Now go get me some goodies. I'll get you goodies, mouthbulb, stirred, dropping that bag. Hum, he merged into the kitchen, straight for the refrigerator. He yanked open the door, rushed through the vegetable bin. He flung lettuce. He yanked open the door, rushed rustled through the vegetable bin. He flung lettuce. He tossed tomatoes. He heard a ha- head of cauliflower and then he pulled out a carrot that's right a carrot carrot it's over for you tooth announced stirred defensively lifting the carrot about his head what are you doing do with that asked his open wide sister stirred grinned he opened his mouth wide very right. Can no, not the carrot, not the carrot. Yes, the carrot, said shouted the steward. No, kid, no. Alice covered his eye. Am I too young to watching this? Closer, closer, closer. And then crunch. Ah, so long, sweet word. What a way to go. Who's done in by an orange veggie? Stuart rubbed his jaw. His he stared at the carrot and the tooth. It was over. What's going to happen to it? asked Allison as he, as she followed her brother upstairs to the bedroom. Stuart placed the molar under his p- pillow, then looked at his sister. Who knows? he said with a big smile. That's the tooth fairy's problem now. Wah, 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 cried baby teeth. Oof, yapped the cafe cane. Please be quiet, said the white stump tooth. I'm trying to read. Pipe down, white guy. What those of sweet tooth have to do to get an ice cream sundae around here and have fun and throw some sprinkle on it while you're at it. The tooth fairy sighed. Rotten teeth. And this is the end of the story. Thank you for listening. Bye bye.